What does it mean to be human? Is it the fact we are multimodal by nature? We can hear, see, and touch the world around us. We can communicate with our fellow humans. We can create or destroy at will. Or is it something deeper? Our capacity for emotions, love, hate, melancholy, or joy. Is it our ability to have free will? That we can teach and learn anything we want or do nothing at all? Let me ask you this. When you were a child, were you born with the ability to speak? Or is it something you gradually absorbed over time? We were born into sensory overload, rapidly ingesting an arbitrary stream of data for our brains to process and make sense of. Picture the sound of your mother's voice as she held your tiny hands. The sound she would make when she fed you food. You cried and she came. This highlights the interplay between sensory input and output and how it ultimately shapes our human experience. And when you can understand this, it highlights the contrast between man and machine. Over the past few years, we've seen a rapid evolution of artificial intelligence from large language conversational models like ChatGPT to diffusion models like Stable and Flux to even voice synthesis models like Eleven Labs and Sesame. And the sheer amount of model releases, news and context regarding AI as a whole is quite often overwhelming. And this is the sentiment I've been hearing for quite some time now. And honestly, myself, I've had to take a step back from all the noise and really think about what is going on with AI. So, what exactly is going on with AI? Look, since the release of ChatGPT in November 2022, we've seen a flood of investment and adoption across all AI fronts. Investment flows into AI have been nearly eightfold since ChatGPT's release and usage even estimated at 80% of people using AI in some capacity daily. And given this newfound accessibility to increasingly more powerful models, in light of this investment and adoption, it's important to highlight something more important. AI-generated content online. According to Business Insider, 57% of online content nowadays had been generated by AI in some capacity. And analysts estimate this figure to be closer to 90% by the end of this year. And I still don't think this figure highlights the sheer magnitude of what's going on with AI today. Sure, we've seen a huge amount of very cool and very useful AI applications. However, let's just think about what I just said. 57% of content online has been generated by AI in some capacity with an estimated 90% by the end of this year. And this includes not only just translation and text content, but also visual and audio media. And let me just say that again, 90% of content online by the end of this year, according to some analysts, will have been generated by AI. Let that sink in. Now, if you're familiar with this idea of the dead internet theory, where a lot of the online human interaction has been replaced by bots, automation, and algorithmically generated media, I think this rise of AI-generated content aligns with this theory's underlying premise. And while we might not fully be there, 
evidence suggests that we're heading there and we're heading there very quickly. But on the contrary, I think this also uncovers something very interesting about AI-generated content. With social media being the medium to post said content, AI-generated content, and it being anonymous in nature, combined with the fact that there's no real repercussions, at least physically, on what you post online, and also in contrast with the very AI models that are generating this content being trained on human data in the first place, almost presents this weird digital mirror of ourselves online. Let me ask you this, if you could create human-like text, audio, images, and videos, what would you create? Better yet, what would you then create in the context of anonymity and a measurable efficiency? Now, if you've been around social media for the past few years, specifically in the last six or 12 months, there exists a lot of meaningless trash, garbage LinkedIn posts, stupid AI-generated Instagram reels with subway surfer Minecraft footage. Um, I've now seen AI-generated deepfake girls on Instagram reels promoting their OnlyFans. I've seen faceless automated YouTube channels generating the same generalist Reddit stories. It's honestly wild. And it feels at times, and I'll, I'll reiterate, it feels like most of the time, social media in light of this influx of AI generated content feels hollow and lacking human elements like creativity. And this is exactly the problem with applying efficiency based tools like different AI models in a predominantly creative space. Everyone ends up posting the same regurgitating high engagement hooks and scripts in an attempt to therefore drive more traffic to them, make more money and automate their workload. And I'm not saying that AI can't empower this or it can't emulate in some capacity creativity. It definitely can. But too often it's merely used to recycle existing high engagement, bad quality content rather than inspire and help accelerate truly novel ideas. The internet was built for one main reason the fast flow of information. AI was built largely on the same premise, only this time with a hundred times the efficiency and multimodal interfaces to do so, making information retrieval, tool execution, and workflow execution so much more accessible to both industries and individuals. Nowadays, you don't have to be proficient in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create a web application, or you don't have to be a linguistic genius to converse across different language barriers. You can do so with simple, multimodal instructions. But as I suggest, this is a double-edged sword. On one hand, we have these amazing applications helping struggling business automate their workflows or their digital workflows that are rather menial in nature, helping individuals and businesses solve complex problems, you name it. And I'm not being biased here, but voice AI in particular is such a good example of this. And really, it's largely why I teach and practice actively in the space as a whole. See, voice AI aims to dissolve this barrier between thought and action. Here's an example. Generally speaking, a human can type on their keyboard between 40 and 50 words per minute. Compare that to the voice interface, we can three times that throughput. We can speak 150 words a minute. I'm 
quite slow, but the normal person could. And this tech, largely powered by this idea of the AI revolution, has opened a floodgate of possibilities, enabling fast information retrieval, tool and workflow executions, freeing up menial tasks within both individual lives and industry, professional and business applications, all processed and relayed in humans' most common interface, speech. However, on the other hand, and used in the wrong context, there exists this idea of digital trash, meaningless content generated online in both text, image, and video format, deep fake AI technology, voice cloning for fraud, you name it. And you're probably thinking by now, well, this happens anytime a really groundbreaking technology is released to the public. There's always these bad actors. Well, let me ask you again this. When we can remove this barrier between thought and action, and it adopts a human form like speech, video, image, or text, and it's used in the wrong context, we're removing two critical human elements, rationality and individualism. And as I mentioned before, used in the wrong context, specifically here, the online ecosystem, this generated context becomes one large aggregation of humanity's collective digital footprint. Blurring the lines between individual expression and authenticity. Online content then adopts this form of collective averages and algorithmically optimized data rather than unique human ideas and perspectives. And instead of taking the time to sit down and think about what exactly you're posting online, this AI unparalleled efficiency removes that altogether. You don't have to think to create something anymore. And this is the idea I'm trying to get at. You can now literally automate the scraping of the top performing Instagram reels for a particular hashtag, for example, pass that text through an LLM to generate a variant of it, and then have it parsed to a voice synthesis model to create some voiceover text. And there you have it. You have a piece of content now that's driving engagement. Not to mention these social media algorithms don't necessarily favor truth or new ideas. Instead, those algorithmically optimized high engagement viewer retention posts. So at what point in time is there room left for new creators, new thought provoking ideas and new thought leaders in online spaces? And this exposes also another problem. When you combine the anonymity of social media with the unparalleled efficiency of AI, what happens when that digital media or data adopts a human form as we're seeing now with these multimodal AI models? And what's happened when that's used to exploit vulnerable people or even worse, the youth of today's society? What happens when your own creativity or ideas are cloned licensed and sold. What happens when we stop trusting online content indefinitely? Although here there are definitely some potential safeguards to combat this, it's not all doom and gloom. However, the fundamental problem of authenticity still remains. Because when digital data adopts this human form or human multimodality, it's no longer arbitrary. It speaks like a human. It feels at times like a human. It looks like a human. Now it's up for debate whether the end product of this is good or bad. Personally, I think it's necessary that we continue going down this path. Why? Because it unveils some underlying issues with the digital reality we live in today. And I could make another video on that or have perhaps a part two. Today, I'm not gonna get into all that. Now look, I'm no saint. 
I'm guilty of generating content via an AI model and releasing it to the digital ecosystem. I'm pretty sure most of us have. But before I go, let me leave you with this. If it's the same pursuit of efficiency that led us here, our drive to build faster, reliable and cheaper systems, then perhaps it's within our power to redirect that very drive towards outcomes more aligned with genuine human values and human creativity. Our fate isn't necessarily sealed, but the decisions we make now on when and why we're using generative AI tools counts. Build and use AI powered systems of all natures within the right context and build them with intent and purpose. In a digital world where machines can accurately emulate human multi-modality, where do machines end and humans begin?